What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to build an organized deployment package for a Python Lambda function. So an organized structured deployment package is a very nice thing to have at the workplace because a lot of the people, especially the ones who are new to software development, they would build a deployment package like this where you have your Lambda code as a function here and then everything else, the external libraries and stuff in the same folder and then zip everything up and upload that into the Lambda function. And obviously this is not the best way to organize it and it's very hard to find your stuff within the package. And obviously it's very difficult to maintain as well. So at the end of today's tutorial, you will be able to create something like this automatically using a cell script to build a package that contains two parts. The first one is the Lambda code that contains your business logic and then a libs library that contains all the external libraries that you installed and intended to use in your Lambda function. So this deployment package looks a lot nicer than the previous one that I showed you. And I think it's a lot easier to maintain as well. And in today's tutorial, we are going to use Docker to help us create a package. And the reason why we, we need to use Docker is that Lambda functions are operated on Linux operating systems. So if we installed our external libraries in, let's say, Mac or Windows operating systems, when we deploy that to the, to the Lambda function, and when we try to import that, sometimes you will get a operating system mismatch issue, and you're likely to have importing problems. So by using Docker, we can ensure that the environment that we use to install our external libraries are exactly the same as the operating system that the Lambda function is going to run at. So if you don't have Docker installed in your machine right now, make sure that you go to the website and download Docker according to your operating system. If you have a MacBook, uh, you choose this option. If you have a Windows PC, you choose this option to install it and make sure that you have it up and running in your machine before you get into the tutorial. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so right now I have VS Code open an empty folder called tutorial. And before we do anything, make sure that you have your Docker running in your machine. Um, if you do have it running, you should be able to see a icon uh, on your toolbar on the top here for Mac users. And you'll be able to see things like this. And after you have Docker running, we are ready to build our automation scripts. So the first file that we're going to need is a requirements.txt file. This is the file that we use to specify the external libraries that we're going to install in our deployment package. And in today's tutorial, we're going to use pandas and requests libraries because those are probably the most popular Python libraries out there. And they're pretty powerful. So let's use them for the demo. And the latest version that we have at the time of recording is 1.4.3. And then for requests, the latest version is 2.27.1. And then the next file that we need is called Docker file. Make sure that it spells exactly this way. And this is the file that we use to specify our Docker image. And the Docker image is like a blueprint that, doc that the Docker is going to use to create environments that we're going to run our software in. And we're going to create an environment that looks exactly like the environment that a Lambda function would run at, so that we're not going to have any operating system mismatch issues. I already have this written down before, so I'm going to copy and paste it. But I'm going to go over each line to make sure that you know what they are. So the first line specifies the base image that we're going to use. And obviously, we're going to use the Amazon Linux image to start with. This is like our base. So this is like the operating system that AWS services would run at. And at the time of recording, this is the latest version of the image. And then in here, uh, what we're doing is we are going to do a YAM update. And then we're going to use YAM to install different things. The first thing is Python, and then pip, and then devil, and then zip, because we're going to use zip to zip up everything for the deployment package. And then finally, we're going to use yam to clean up all the downloads that we just used. And then we're going to use Python 3 to install pip. And at the time of recording, this is the latest version. And then we use pip to install a library called virtualinf 
and that is the library that we're going to use to create a virtual environment and then download the uh, Python libraries. And that is the latest version. And by the way, I'm just using Python 3.8 um, because that's what I've been using for a while. But you can use other versions if you want to. And then next, what we need is a shell script file called docker install. And this is the file that is actually going to run inside the Docker container that is going to create a virtual environment. Remember what we install here is going to use this library to create a virtual environment for us and then uh, install all the libraries in the package and then zip everything up. So this is the one that does all the heavy lifting. And I already have it written down before, so I'm going to copy and paste it. So what it does here is it uses the virtual inf library that we installed earlier to create a virtual environment called vnf but you can call it whatever you want, I just call it virtual inf and remember I told you that you can use other versions of Python other than 3.8 um, but if you do that, make sure that the path and stuff is right here instead of 3.8, it may be other things, you have to check it for yourself and then next, we activate the virtual environment and then we're going to use pip to install all the libraries that we specify in the requirements .txt file which we have two here and then save them inside this folder here and then we cd into this folder where we install all the libraries we create an init.py file inside this folder because we need this file in order for python to recognize this directory contains external libraries and we can use import for that and then we go outside of the side packages directory and then we rename the side package library to be libs because I think this name is more intuitive for a folder that contains other libraries and then we zip everything up and call it deployment package and then next we're going to create another shell script called runner.shell which is the entry point of this whole automation script because that is the file that we're going to specify the steps to use the docker file that we just created to build the docker container and then run this script inside the docker container to create the uh, deployment package and of course I have this written down before so I'm going to copy and paste it so what I'm doing here is we're going to specify a variable called container name and we're just going to call it lambda container or lambda docker and then we're going to specify the image name that we're going to use the docker file to create and we're going to call that AWS Lambda Builder Image but you can call it whatever you want and then we're going to build a container using the container name and the docker image that we just created and then we're going to copy the requirement .txt file and paste that inside the container and then this line what it does is it executes the docker install.shell file inside the docker container uh, that does all the heavy lifting that we just went over and then remember at the end we zip everything up and call it deployment package inside the docker container so what it does here is it copies that deployment package and pastes that in the root directory which is right here with the same name and what it does here is just stop the uh, container and then remove it uh, so in here we copy and paste the deployment package.zip uh, folder in the root directory and what we're doing here is we're gonna put the lambda function.py file inside the deployment package so that we have everything in one place and now let's create our lambda function that contains all the business logics so remember in the beginning we said that we're gonna have all the external libraries inside a folder called libs uh, so we're going to import them from that folder so the first thing that we have to do is we need to make that folder accessible by, uh, by the lambda function so we're going to add that to our system path and now I think we can just import the libraries as is so the first thing we're going to import pandas spd import requests and then we're going to need json as well and then next we're going to define a lambda handler function that takes in a request actually it's events 
in context. And then next, we can just do something simple. We can just do something like my data is equal to column one. That is a list one, two, and then column two, three, four, something like that. And then we're going to define a data frame using the pandas library to make sure that it's working. We can do data equal to my data. And then we can just print out something like an pandas data frame. And then just print out the data frame itself. And then we're going to use the request library to make sure that it's working as well. So I'm going to print out something like request like starting something like that and then we're going to use the request library to do a simple get and i found a static page link from the website uh, so i'm going to use that for the demo and then we can just print out what it looks like the text and then we're going to return something like status code 200 and then the body to be hello from my lambda something like that just simple okay so the lambda code is done and now we are ready to run this script to create our deployment package and test it out in our account so i'm gonna do terminal new terminal and before we can execute this runners.shell file we need to give it permission to run to execute in our machine so i'm gonna do a chmod 744 that should be enough and then we can just do a dot slash runner it's running okay so the deployment package was created successfully and as you can see here uh, we created something called deployment package zip and that's our deployment package and let's open it up to make sure that the structure looks as expected first so that's the deployment package. Let me unzip it. Okay, so inside the deployment package, we have the lambda function.py, and then we have a libs folder that contains all the external libraries that we just installed it. Okay, so everything looks fine. So I think right now we are ready to test it out on the AWS console. All right, so right now I am on the homepage of, of the AWS console. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the Lambda page. And then hit create function. Give it a name. I just call it my demo function or something like that. And then obviously we're going to choose Python. And I believe 3.8 is what we're going to use. And then I'll just let it create a new row for me because it's a basic function. Okay, so it's created successfully. And now we're going to upload the deployment, deployment package that we just created. So we're going to navigate to that folder and select the zip folder. Hit save. Okay, so it's updated successfully. And now we're ready to test it out to make sure that the libraries are working. It's able to be imported and used. So I'm going to hit test. Create a test event. We don't need this. Hit test. Okay, so it's successful. And we can see that it's able to respond a successful uh, response. And then let's look at the logs. It's able to use Panda to create a data frame and then it's able to use the request library to do a request on the static website page and print out what the text is. So it seems like everything is working as expected. And if you want to make changes to your Lambda code, you can just make changes here and then run the runner script, script one more time. Um, and it will just create a new deployment package that overrides the old one. So you can update it that way. So this is it everyone, I hope you have learned something and if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.